Before we move on, to remark about eigenvectors. If your training has been in quantum mechanics and some parts of classical mechanics, you might be used to the idea that eigenvectors create orthogonal frames. It's not true, and in some subjects, it's extremely important that it's not true. Subjects like fluid dynamics or neuroscience. In general, the eigenvectors are not orthogonal. Look again at hamilton cayley formula written as one i term in a product of over eigenvalues times the remainder, which we call projection operator when it's correctly normalized. Because P is a function of M only, matrix on, matrix commutes with itself and every matrix also commutes with every function of the same matrix. So we can write this also as PI on the left-hand side. If we write it on the right-hand side, then what PI is, it's the eigenvector in every column just multiplied by some constant. So on the right-hand side, we have right eigenvectors, which I will denote as, as a d-dimensional vector is an upper label I. That's that part of the story. But if I put it on the left-hand side, then PI is a bunch of transpose stuff because I multiplied with a matrix from right hand side again zero. That's a bunch of rows on right hand side I had columns, but on left hand side, which I have to stack horizontally. So it's EI times some constant, and then the same vector again, replicas of the same eigenvector. But now I put the label downstairs, so for the left eigenvectors. Now, in general, there is no reason for either set to be orthogonal. Neither the right nor the left eigenvectors are orthogonal. It's called non-normality. There is orthogonality of the following kind. If I take a right eigenvector and vector multiplied by the transpose, which is the left eigenvector j, sorry. This is if i not equal j, and that just comes from the quality of either multiplied on the right or multiplying on the left, or some constant if i equal j, and that we can write as a Kronecker delta. And in this case, it's natural to distinguish between upper and lower indices. Ignore it if you don't like it. So in general, you really have to think of right eigenvectors, left eigenvectors. And by the time you get to statistical mechanics, uh, ergodic theory, foundations of statistical mechanics, chaos, it's really, really important that right and left eigenvectors are not the same. The right eigenvector might be a delta function, a very sharp distribution, while the left eigenvector might be very, very broad, unbounded distributions, and it's actually important if you do care about it. Still, you're not entirely wrong. Some, some matrices have orthogonal eigenvector frames. If they have special properties, for example, if M i j element of a matrix equals the transpose complex conjugate that is called a Hermitian matrix. You get into familiar territory if you had quantum mechanics, or if Mij is a symmetric matrix. It's only under special condition that you have normal frames. In general, a matrix has right, you know, has eigen values, which are just intrinsic to the matrix. But then, depending on coordinate frame you choose to represent your system, it will have eigenvectors that really define in particular coordinate frame. And the important thing is that the right eigenvectors and left eigenvectors are different. 
And sometimes this is very profound. Uh, the right vector could be called natural measure in statistical physics. And the left eigenvector might turn out to be an unbounded function, which you have to worry about. It. What is orthogonal, though, is left transpose eigenvector multiplied by the right column vector, right eigenvector. If they correspond to the same eigenvalue, that has to give me a constant, non-zero constant. And if they don't correspond to the same eigenvalue, then that gives me a zero. So that kind of orthogonality, that's orthonormality, does exist.